Thank you, Shelby. It's nice to be here to talk about one of my favorite groups of plants, and that are the peppers, also known as chiles in Mexico and pimentas in, in uh, the Portuguese-speaking world, Brazil. Like tomatoes and potatoes, they're part of the Solanaceae family, which is obviously a very important crop family, and they're warm season perennials and naturally self-pollinating crop. Uh, they do exhibit some protogeny and protandry, um, though they do maintain quite a bit of uniformity through uh, inbreeding. They're a diploid species with 2n equals 12 chromosomes. And as you can see from the picture, they have a lot of, a lot of phenotypic diversity, which makes them an interesting crop. Um, they are not related to black pepper, though they are now the most important spice um, in the world. And maybe they could be credited for the discovery of the New World because the, the Columbus was looking for spices on his voyage. All of them are native to the New World from Mexico all the way to Argentina. Um, the most important are the uh, cultivated types are the C. Uh, capsicum annuum and those are mostly from Mexico and Central America. The other species are important more in South America and uh, particularly in the lowland areas for Capsicum chinense and in the highlands for Capsicum baccatum and Capsicum pubescens. As I mentioned, annuum includes such as the bell pepper and the jalapeno pepper and they're very important in uh, many parts of the world. They've been selected bred much more than the other species. Capsicum chinense is very common in northern Brazil, and Venezuela, Colombia, and tropical regions. The habanero is the most notorious of this group. Frutescens is also a tropical lowland species from northern South America, and in Brazil it's common. Uh, Tabasco would be the most famous capsicum frutescens. Pubescens is a less common pepper cultivated um, mostly in the high Andes and it's fairly cold tolerant and it's not heat tolerant. Um, it doesn't cross at all with other species of capsicum. And Bacotum is a very important species in much of South America but rarely cultivated outside of that region. This is wild pepper growing commonly in South Texas also all the way throughout uh, Latin America this uh, wild species called chili piquin it's subspecies aviculari of capsicum annuum and it's quite a hardy bush even cold and heat tolerant can survive freezing temperatures to some degree within pepper there are many types and these are largely due to the fact that it has been bred by humans for thousands of years for fruit quality and much of the fruit quality relates to shape and appearance and size and pungency um, these are many of the common types grown within the United States and Mexico and of course the bell pepper being grown throughout the world as the most popular sweet pepper. In the United States bell peppers are responsible for about two-thirds of total production and they're all sweet pepper, the bell pepper, and generally consumed in a salad but also used in certain cooking. Uh, Anaheim pepper would be the second most common, also known as New Mexico or chili pepper or hatch pepper. And uh, it is consumed largely as a processed product, but more increasingly as a fresh cooked product. And then these other types are uh, largely produced in other locations and imported, particularly jalapenos now are largely imported from Mexico. Others that are on the market are considered specialty types. India is by far the biggest producer, largely because they consume a lot of peppers. China also produces a lot and exports a lot, too, in the form of, of powder. And Mexico is the largest per capita consumer, so they eat a lot of peppers in Mexico. Also, these other countries produce and or consume quite a lot. In Spain, it's, it's mostly sweet peppers that are produced, whereas in Pakistan and Korea, mostly hot peppers. Peppers have a unique pungency determined by some vanilla alkaloid compounds uh, called capsaicinoids. And in order to measure these, Wilbur Scoville determined that uh, by a dilution procedure, he could classify them 
and give a relative scale of pungency or how they how they burned your mouth, so to speak. Now, since then, we're able to analyze them with uh, high performance liquid chromatography to get an exact uh, quantification of the different capsaicinoid compounds, which all contribute to this unique heat in peppers. This is a typical chromatogram from our lab where we measure some of these different compounds and typically capsaicin and dehydrocapsaicin are the predominant forms. All of them could contribute fairly equally to the uh, heat sensation. And here's a chart giving the range bell pepper and, and other sweet peppers completely uh, lacking capsaicin of zero all the way up to habanero type peppers which are in excess of uh, in excess of a million Scoville on some of the some of the ones that are available these days. Pure capsaicin based on a Scoville scale would be about 16 million. Now bell peppers are large, blocky, and blunt and have been selected for larger and larger size uh, mostly based on consumer appeal. They're frequently consumed green but then mature into a rainbow of colors based on their their carotenoid profile profiles and other pigment compounds. And at this mature stage, they're much more nutritious. So even though more consumed green, there's a growing interest in consuming them when they're more mature because they're more nutritious. As I mentioned, there's a multitude of colors, orange, yellow, white, purple, brown. In Europe, a very popular type is the very elongated Lemuyo bell pepper, and this is grown frequently in protected culture and demands a very high, high value. Both the crop and the seed are very valuable. And then some peppers are able to produce anthocyanin uh, strictly in the epidermal tissue, and some of them have been bred um, as a different variety just for consumer appeal. Um, not necessarily for the health benefits, the, the relative concentrations are somewhat low. In other peppers, this is an unfavorable quality, such as jalapeno. They do not want anthocyanin. The cayenne pepper is the most important processed pepper in the United States and has been the subject of a lot of breeding to improve it for disease resistance. It was originally selected in Louisiana and is a component of the most popular uh, hot pepper sauces, some of which are called red hot sauce or Louisiana sauce or Cajun sauce and they're very important for uh, a lot of cuisines, chicken wings and other things and for pepper flakes and hot sauces. The Hatcher Anaheim chili is the most important um, pepper in New Mexico and also is grown in Texas and California. Um, it has several hundred years history in New Mexico and so there are land, many land races there and it's usually not that hot though there are some selections that are quite hot. It is the most popular powder pepper in the United States. This is one developed in our program to implement some virus resistance or in introduce some virus resistance genes into one of these types of peppers. Also, better heat tolerance and concentrated maturity. Now, wax peppers are very popular in some areas, particularly the banana pepper, the sweet banana pepper. Anyone that goes to Subway could see these or many other restaurants. In parts of Europe, particularly Eastern Europe, it's also extremely popular, this type of pepper. And they range from completely sweet to fairly hot, uh, even hotter than a jalapeno in the cascabella types. Poblano pepper is the most important pepper in Mexico for spice. It's grown to be dried as whole pods or made into powder and used in very, very many of, of their recipes, such as mole. And it's usually not very pungent. Uh, it can be slightly pungent, but it shouldn't be excessively pungent. And it is also it is also an important component of one of my favorite things, the chili relleno, which is a stuffed ancho pepper stuffed with some meat or rice or cheese and, and baked and cooked in a sauce. Jalapeno pepper is the most important fresh spicy pepper in both the United States and Mexico. It's a very integral part of Texas cuisine, actually, having grown up here uh, I can't remember how early it was. I think I was probably three when I ate my first jalapeno. This is imported largely now from Mexico, which is the proud producer and origin of this pepper from the Jalapa region. It typically is quite spicy, between 2,500 to 5,000 Scoville. And when it's dried, it makes up chipotle, which has become a very popular ingredient in many uh, cuisines uh, in the United States. 
Serrano pepper is one of the most popular peppers for fresh use in both Mexico and Texas and California, particularly to make fresh salsas. It has a unique flavor um, and it is typically quite pungent, more so than a jalapeno um, typically. It comes from uh, eastern Mexico and also from the Puebla region. Now Tabasco pepper may be the most famous pepper in the world because it's uh, it's it's a trademark, it's an idea, it's almost a culture. This hot sauce has been around for over a hundred years in, in one family and it is the most common hot sauce condiment in the world. It's The pepper itself is quite pungent. It's also quite ornamental and grows on a, on a large, vigorous, fairly disease resistant plant. Now, Calcicum chinensis is also the group that includes the habanero and the world's hottest pepper, the Trinidad scorpion, and its and its relatives. It's a very diverse group of peppers, uh, all coming from Brazil, Colombia, Venezuela region, parts of Peru, not from China. That was a misnomer by the botanist that classified it. It typically is lantern shaped and is typically green or light green or dark green, maturing to a rainbow of colors, much like a bell pepper. However, unlike a bell pepper, it's extremely pungent. So buyer beware. Recently, we released a new cultivar of this pepper to improve its disease resistance, particularly for spotted wilt and root knot nematode, which are common problems in peppers. It's one of my favorite, I have to say, as a hot sauce, but as I mentioned, uh, a little goes a long way, extremely pungent. In parts of Mexico and Central America, though, they like a lot of it. The Trinidad scorpion is classified as the world's hottest pepper, 1.5 million Scoville. Apparently, there's also new variations of this that are even more pungent. Now, the pungency may not be all that palatable, but it is useful for industrial purposes. This compound capsaicin is used in not just pharmaceuticals, but also in defense pepper spray. The military uses it. It's also used to impregnate certain items to keep animals from chewing on them. The Rocoto or Capsicum pubescens is the, is the only truly high altitude pepper. From the high in the Andes, it's frost tolerant and cold tolerant and not heat tolerant. So it grows very well in mild, slightly cool climates. And it makes a very large bush, almost a small tree. And it has a unique trait. It has black seed, completely black seed, unlike any other pepper. It looks like a small apple. They also call it manzano. It has beautiful purple flowers and ornamental looking foliage as well. The cotton is extremely important in parts of South America where it does well in, in both lowland and, and highland locations. It's quite adaptable and quite resistant to a lot of diseases and pests. It is frequently very pungent as well. It has a unique trait, unlike other peppers, it has the yellow spot on the corolla, responsible, I mean, created by a single dominant gene, YS. This can be transferred, though difficultly, into other species as a marker. Here are Peruvian types of, of the capsicum bicotum. In Peru, this is one of the more common species of peppers consumed. Now, breeding peppers is really quite straightforward. Pedigree selection.